we go. Hi. Good morning, everybody. I'm Sue Coffin, numerologist, and I'm here with my dear friend, Dorothy Morgan, who's an astrologer in New Hampshire. And she is going to help us understand the next Mercury retrograde that is coming forward in, uh, let's see, May 29th is starting. Yes. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Indeed it does. So I'll let you take it from here. Okay, cool. Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here again today. So uh, we're going to give you some stuff. Sue's going to ask questions and because sometimes I go right. to astrology for, for some folks. Um, and there will be some astrology in this, so don't be overly, um, you know, don't glaze over too fast. I'm going to tell well, you, you what know, I mean. The nice thing is, Dorothy, I don't have any experience with astrology, so I'm going to be asking the questions that those people don't. Have. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So that's really cool. So yeah, so I'll just share my screen. I just have a couple things to show you just because it's it's always nice to look at something, you know, besides our faces. <laughs> Yeah, right. Just a thought. Um, here's just a, just a PDF file. I'm sorry, you get to see the whole thing. But this is when Mercury is retrograde. So it is May 29th. And this is Eastern time. So you have to adjust to your time zone. But, you know, the moment it goes retrograde, it's usually that day. The day of, I want you to look at these dates, June 29th. I mean, May 29th and June 22nd. That is when on May 29th is when Mercury stops and goes into reverse, just like you reversing your car. You have to make a complete stop to go from one direction to the other. This is the symbol for Mercury. This is what Mercury looks like under some great little ultraviolet pictures, I believe. That's the symbol for retrograde. That's the symbol for Gemini. So it's retrograde from 24 on, all the way back to 16, and then it stops and turns back around on June 22nd. So what does that mean? This is what it looks like in the sky, the whole year of Mercury retrogrades. It's a really, this is the one right down here that I got my mouse moving. It's a small, small area. What does that mean? I'm going to stop my share for a minute. So with Mercury retrograde, the 29th to the 22nd of June, he only moves eight degrees in those 24 days, all right? Now, on typical, he'll be retrograde around 21 to 24 days. He usually goes 15 to 17 degrees, this time just eight. That's important because that means that it is, while it's retrograde, it is going really slow, like a student driver for the first time backing up, you know? It's like, yeah. we're not doing that fast. <laughs> <laughs> and so, <clears throat> T to me, it feels like this will be um, a bit intense because okay. Mercury in Gemini is its own sign. That's information, communication. When it's just whipping through, it could go through in a matter of two weeks when it's not its year to be retrograde in that sign. It can go wicked fast. That's New England. <laughs> wicked. Um, I have a lot of people that watch that are not from New England. They should be used to it by now. <laughs> I understand that word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very New England. And, uh, and so with it in the sign of Gemini, and it is in the sign of Gemini from May 3rd. So as of this recording, um, it's already been in there for a while. As of this recording, on we're recording this on May 21st, it will already be in the shadowy area. So we may start to get little hints as to what might be slowing us down or what we might need to be reevaluating over yeah. the retrograde period. And there's going to be a lot of uh, really good times for reevaluating things. So, and then, so from May 3rd to July 11th, so it spends 10 weeks in its own sign, the sign of Gemini. So what are those qualities? Just like you would, you would describe what the qualities of a number is. The, again, the qualities of Gemini is in from gathering information, figuring, you know, and sharing it with others. Now we do have a little, we have a little problem. <laughs> We're going to have a little problem with this one. I, yeah, I just, yeah. I hate to predict it. I hate predicting problems. Oops. I haven't, I'm not sharing my screen. I want to share my screen. I just want to give you just another quick, quick 
brief look at something else. Here's what the chart looks like. This is what Mercury looks like when it's stationary to retrograde. And it is at a square angle to Neptune. Neptune is the planet and in Pisces and the sign of illusion, dreams, not seeing things clearly. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. And so if it's retrograde, here are some of the potentiality with this. Um, we could all of a sudden, while it's ret Mercury's retrograde, and it's going to be connecting with Neptune from May 15th to June 15th. So it's already connecting to Neptune. So all of a sudden, you know, the wool gets pulled over our eyes, or there's a fog, or maybe we're seeing life through rose-colored glasses. That's a real, very typical definition of Neptune and Pisces. Seeing life through rose-colored glasses, not really seeing what's really happening. So there's so many different ways we can use this energy. You gotta, you have to know yourself really well to know what you wanna do because here we may have a hard time understanding or seeing what the truth is. Now you could say, yeah, no kidding. That was all of 2020, half of 2021. I mean, what is the truth? All the information that we've been getting, it's just, there's so much. And it is really difficult for <clears throat> most of us to decipher what the truth is. And that will continue. But I want you to bring it back to you because that's what I love to do in my own practice. What does this mean for me personally? So personally, um, I want you to, if you have something that you know you've been kind of holding off on, work on that during this retrograde period, May 29th to June 22nd, and even the whole time Mercury's in Gemini, work on that. But how do I work on it if I can't see the truth, if I can't see what my end goal is? Because you don't actually really want to make hard choices right now, not okay, probably hard isn't the right word. You know, you, it's not a good idea to say, I'm really sure about this. I'm going for it. That is just not what we should be doing right now. I mean, you can do it, but later on you'll see the truth and you'll like, oh, well, I guess I should have kind of waited, should have waited on that one. So check in. If you're a person who likes to douse or use pendulums or things like that, or even use your body, whatever, whatever, energy work that you do or things like that, just tap into that, tap into your higher sense of knowing, tap into your own truth, because no matter what's going on, I mean, who hasn't heard all of the different stories? And there's so many people that believe this and believe that, and this is this and that is that conspiracies or not conspiracies, whatever it is, what's your truth? And this is going to be a, a really big exercise in that. And that's that whole same time period that I was telling you about, which is back, let's go back right. here, especially May 29th through June 22nd. And so take your time with that, you know, and, and trust what you feel is, again, your most important uh, um, truth for you. It's going to be important that we stay fluid. I just want to make sure I have a lot of good notes that we stay fluid during this time period. Now, am I saying you, you can't do anything? No, I'm not saying that. But I am saying it's time to um, you know, make the choice from that inner knowing, not from what anybody else right. is telling you. Right, Sue? Oh, you do. The numbers are saying the exact same thing because yeah. um, we're in that five universal year. And the five mm -hmm. is all about change, expansion, freedom. Mm -hmm lowering those boundaries that we brought in on 2020, which was the four year. Right. Uh, June is the 11-2 month. And that's of sensitivity. There's a lot of sensitivity. There could be something unexpected that comes forward in June. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's, um, uh, and I think it will be around the second week, the first and the second week, we're going to see something come forward. Yeah. That could yeah. be unexpected. We have, um, we also have, which I, I didn't pull up yet. I can pull that up really quick as soon as I do a new share. Let me go grab that. Um, another thing that we also have going on. Yeah, let me grab that. Give me a second here. 
where is it? Eclipses. Um, we have an eclipse on May 26, and I know that's not typically part of our, our lecture, but um, I have talked about that. That's on my YouTube channel, Dorothy Morgan Astrologer on YouTube. I talked about, it's up there now, the May 26 eclipse, but that's not the big one. This solar eclipse on June 10th, Mercury retrograde. This is what it looks like just from my location, but the numbers will be the same for everybody. But it's just after sunrise on the East Coast of the United States. Um, if you're in Northern Canada, you will be able to see this solar eclipse, but that's pretty much the only place you'll be able to see it. Um, here's Mercury retrograde. We're right in the middle of Mercury retrograde during um, a, a new moon solar eclipse. And in new moons... Um, is usually when we want to initiate new things, but we still can't always see what we're trying, what we're initiating. Again, it's like taking a handful of seeds that got all mixed up. You think you know what they are, but you're going to plant them anyways, and you're going to nurture them. That's what a new moon is. It's like I have all the intentions of planting this or beginning this or starting this, but I'm still going to need to wait a little while and there's different time right. periods, but we're going to wait a little while to figure out what's, what's going to sprout. Right. So yeah, always the two, the two is feeding. about delays. Say that again. Everything, the two slows down. It's about delays. There's going to be delays this in June mm -hmm. for sure. Yes. And we have to lean into that and let that happen because a delay isn't a bad thing. Right. Right. We, if something gets delayed, then it gives us a little bit extra chance to figure yeah. it out further down the road. Exactly, exactly. And that, also, the, um, the two is sensitive, very highly sensitive. So yeah, um, words, people might misinterpret words. Oh my goodness, absolutely. So we have to be very careful that we're really understanding what the other person is trying to tell us. It's very, um, very diligent. And I always uh -huh. tell my people that if, when that happens, instantly address it. That way you don't yeah. go home and worry about it. And the anxiety oh my gosh, right? bubbles up. Right. Yeah. yeah. Let me see what else. So, um, yeah. And so again, that biggest thing, and we'll, we may even ask ourselves these questions. I actually pulled a couple of cards just to get more insight um, outside of the astrology, but it matches the astrology. I actually right. pulled a um, from just a, a, what's it called? native spirit deck, um, the wounded healer card. And, um, and that yeah. is about, um, deeper, a deeper process. Right. And, and so with Mercury in Gemini retrograde with this eclipse, especially, and that means it's the dark of the moon. Right. And, um, cause the moon is dark for 24 hours, approximately on each side of the new moon, you cannot see the moon. It's in front of the sun. And even if you could see it because of the eclipse, you can't because you get blinded by that ring of fire. <laughs> so there's no way to see a new moon. Um, but Mercury is inquisitive. And so one of the things we can do is, again, ask ourselves, and this is something that will be happening, is we will be asking ourselves, not everybody, but some of us who are on a journey, who am I? You know, why, why am I here? What am I meant to do? Those are wonderful questions to ask yourself during this Mercury retrograde that includes a square aspect, here it is, it's still square, to Neptune, that includes the a new moon solar eclipse. And within four days of this eclipse, the exact square between Saturn and Uranus is really going to shake things up in the world. So if you're looking for, June is gonna be like walking on <laughs> quicksand. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. Uh, but the, the thing that our people can do who are watching this is to find that serene, peaceful place for them. Yes. They yes. need to work on them. Not think about everybody else and all the chaos that's around that's them. Right. They've got to take care of themselves. That's right. It's exactly yeah. why I said, bring it. Let's bring it back to you. I know there's right. a lot of chaos in the world. That is not going to stop. It will I never know. stop. We, we, we just have so much information coming from every corner of the planet. There's no way chaos is ever going to stop, but bring it back to you. Mercury yeah. and the sign of Gemini is a Gemini is a very personal sign. It is about me and, mm -hmm. um, and what I need and Gemini as well as Mercury is, is like, what do I need just in my immediate family, my family? five people that are most important to me or whomever, um, even right. my neighborhood, Gemini rules the neighborhood. And right. it's not 
a long ways away. It's like, if you feel you need to be, something is important to you, then, you know, do it in your neighborhood. Right. Do it in your neighborhood. Listen to your gut. Yes. Listen to your gut. Don't be listening to, uh, really, really tune in because yeah. the 11 too is that will help you tune in. It's going to pull us yeah. into ourselves. Yeah. So don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. I know. I just finished that as a personal year. Well, I'm almost, I think, I think I'm out of it now because my birthday's on the 10th. Yeah. My birthday is on the day of this eclipse. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> Oh my. It happens. Yeah. If you have a birthday near an eclipse within the three or four days, it's usually a powerful year for you. Usually wow. depending on if it's the new moon or the full moon. So that I know there's a lot of new beginnings, you know, right. we'll discover what they are later, but I know. And that's the fun thing about us. We can see what the planets are doing and we can see what the energy of the numbers are doing, but can we actually nail it right to a head? No, because the universe is going to do it once if, it what is. It we need. It, it is. It, it's. It's got our best interest at heart. It's like, but we have to feed it. You know, it's going to do exactly what we tell it to. So right. we need to. We need to do that. You know, here's here's a, a unrealized manifestation. Not unrealized. I didn't realize it until I was talking with a close friend about it. I knew last year, even before that. I mean, I lived in you know downtown the city I was at. And um, I knew that this eclipse was on my birthday, the morning of my birthday, early in the morning. And I'm like, I'm going to rent a house on the beach or part, something really close to the beach so I can just be there at that moment of the new moon, even though I know I can't see the eclipse. Well, I got, I got evicted because my landlord had wanted to sell their house back in March. I found the place I'm at. It just happened to fall in my lap. I can walk to the beach. It's uh, not even oh my. <laughs> half a mile from here and I'm like oh my god look at that I did do that and I, I live here it. I'm not even renting a room for the night <laughs> I <laughs> I got a year lease. <laughs> that is so wonderful but it's so true our thoughts are so powerful so if powerful. we're gonna live in chaos that if we think we are then that's where we're gonna be I know and it's hard when you're in it and when you're in it so <laughs> if you need help of course reach reach out to somebody that's going to be your landline, if you will, your, your anchor, your tether. It's really important right. to find that um, this right now, especially it had, we could say that again for all the times. <laughs> well, you but, know, the two, the two likes to lean on people. It wants you to lean on people. Okay. It wants you not to, to take advice and to listen and, and, right. but it wants you to listen to your own gut. Yeah. And to listen to other people, but what are you feeling right now? Do you yeah. feel like that's appropriate or if it's inappropriate, mm -hmm. then they yeah, need I'm to. Sure when you do sessions and when I do sessions, I mean, I'm telling people stuff. They're like, oh my God, I knew that. And I'm like, good. Yeah. I don't know your life. And I could see that in your astrology right. and it matches with how you're feeling. What a fantastic validation to Correct. know that you're on the right path. And I know that happens with the numerology too. Oh, yes. Big time. Well. <laughs> Big time. It's very seldom we get a, a reading that's off. But when we do, it's because the math is then wrong. I've done something wrong in the calculations or um, I've misspelled something in their name. Yeah, I, I'm off when when I don't put the right birth date in. <laughs> oh, there you go. The wrong yeah. year or I put a.m. instead of p.m. And that makes a difference. Yep. Yeah. And isn't it funny because I don't know about you, but for me, Within the first five minutes, I know I'm not connecting. Yeah. I know I've made this mistake. Yeah. I've and been that way to too. Redo it. Yeah. You just know it, mm -hmm. it's uh, wonderful. So much fun. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, uh, yeah, it was that was wonderful, Dorothy. I hope that everybody heeds our advice and just relaxes and yeah. leans into it and reaches yep. out to the people that they love yeah. and follow their gut. Yeah, do what you're led to do. And um, yeah, just trust your own inner wisdom. And if you yeah. need guidance, that's it's fine to ask for it, but don't ask everybody. <laughs> or don't Google everything. Ugh. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it makes me crazy. <laughs> it does. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, and I thank you very much for, so for much. doing this for wonderful. us. I we'll, love it. We'll talk to you on the next one. Absolutely. Take good care, everybody. Bye.